If you're having trouble with DML and SOCL governor limits in your APEX code, then this video is for you. My name is Mitch Rout, and I'm one of the many Salesforce experts at Quorum One. In this video, I'll show you some simple techniques of how to bulkify your DML and SOCL queries so you don't hit those governor limits. As usual, I'll put the GitHub link to the example code in the description of the video. Now let's get started. Here we have a while loop that inserts an account for each iteration of that while loop, and you can see that we're going to iterate on this while loop for 200 uh, iterations. So we should get 200 accounts inserted one at a time here on line nine. So if we go ahead and run this, we should get the too many DML executions since we're trying to do 200 and the limit is 150. So if I expand my output window here a little bit, you can see that we get the too many DML statements, 151. So here you can see it hits the 150 DML limit and nopes out at 151. And you can see that it also uh, worked with 150 rows, so one row for each DML statement. So that's the most basic example. We know that you can't do uh, DML statements within a loop like that. So how do we fix that? Well, instead of creating a DML statement for each individual record we want to insert, we put all those records into a list, and then we run the DML insert statement on the list. So as you can see here, we have the same loop variables and the same while loop, but instead we have an account list or a list of accounts. So instead of running insert account right here, we're going to add that account to an accounts list. And then after the loop is run, we're going to insert the entirety of the list. So let's run this and see what it looks like. Okay, so if you scroll back up here, no error here like we saw before. So there were no errors. And we can see that we only ran one DML statement, and that was the insert of the accounts list right here. And you can see that down here, we inserted 200 rows. So one DML call, 200 rows. Great. Now let's move on to an example using a SOCL query. So here we have a query to get a list of accounts. So often you would see a list of accounts coming through to you in a trigger or some other bulkified uh, apex action. So I'm gonna simulate, you can think of this as just being the entry point of a trigger.new uh, list of whatever object you're triggering off of. So we come in with a list of accounts and here for each account, we're gonna to try to get all of the contacts associated with all of the accounts. So we have a list of accounts, and each of those accounts has related contacts, and we want a more global list of all the accounts related to those contacts. So one way to do that is to loop through the list of accounts that we're given and run a SOCL statement, a select statement for each account, and then add that to a, a list of contacts to then move on and do something with. Here I'm just writing out a, a debug statement. So if we run this SOCL query inside of a loop, it's, we know this is a bad thing, here's what we get. So let me clear out our output from the last one, and let's run this. You can see just like that first DML error, we have too many SQL queries, 101. So you only get 100 SQL queries per transaction. So we went over that very quickly because we have 200 accounts uh, in this, this date example database. In order to fix this, we're going to use a where in clause. So we're gonna get all of the contact records that are associated with the account list in one query. And here's what that looks like. So here's our initial accounts population that would be coming in from a trigger or whatever. And then we can just pass that list to our SOCL select statement using where the thing we're looking to query on is in this collection of accounts. So by default, if you pass in the entire collection to a SOCL statement, it will look it up based on the ID, the primary ID of that object type. And in this case, it will use the account ID. So we're comparing account ID to the primary ID of an account record, which is account ID. So that's same, same, and we get our list of contacts. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. And you can see here, I'm, I'm writing out a debug statement. So you can kind of see what's going on. So you can see that we we're able to query each of the, looks like 200 
account and contact pairs. So each, each of the 200 accounts has one contact. So we're seeing them all map up all in one statement. And you can see here, the number of SQL, SQL queries is two out of 100. So we have one to initialize our account list and then just the one to get all the contacts for all the accounts. And you can see we two, two DML statements and we queried 400 rows, two sets of 200. And now we'll move on to our last example. This is similar to the accounts uh, query we just did, the group of accounts, uh, contacts associated with accounts query we just did, except this time, we're starting off with an object that's different. It doesn't have the primary ID that we want to query off of. So in this case, we were given a list of opportunities, but we want to get all of the contact records that are associated with the account of that opportunity. So we still need to get the collection of account IDs, but we need to get it off of the opportunity object instead. So we can't do something like this. I have this little uh, SQL query written in an example. We're trying to say, give me all the contacts where the account ID is in the collection of opportunities.account ID. It doesn't work that way. You can't specify which ID to use off of an object. So what we have to do is extract the ID we need and put it into a list of IDs. So you can see here, we have a collection of IDs and I'm gonna call them account IDs because that's what we'll put in there. And so we'll loop over the opportunities list and for each opportunity, We'll take out the account ID associated with that opportunity, put it into our account IDs list, and then we'll just drop it into our where in clause, just like the last example. We just had to extract the ID so we could specify exactly which ID we wanted to pass in. So if we go ahead and run this, you can see the results are the same as our last example, but we're coming off the opportunity object instead of the account object. So it makes it a little bit more complicated. Number of SQL queries, two out of 100. And then once again, our query rows are 400. If you're looking for more help with your Apex or anything else Salesforce related, come check out our Salesforce page at Quorum One, where you can schedule a consultation to talk with one of our many Salesforce experts.